So who would they wait for, the Sahaba? They would wait for the Bedouins to come to Rasulullah Because the Bedouins, they lived in the outskirts of Medina. They didn't have much care for respect and for the rights of others because they were brought up in a way where just consider everyone equal and not have much respect. That's why when they would come to the gathering of Rasulullah with the Sahaba, and they would say, Ya Muhammad. They wouldn't even say, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, O Prophet of Allah. They would just say, O Muhammad. But the Sahaba, they would have a conversation with Rasulullah They would say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Nabi Allah. So these Bedouins would come to Rasulullah and just ask questions. Whatever question was on their mind, they would just ask. And the Sahaba would wait for this, these occasions because these Bedouins would sometimes ask questions which had some meaning. So this Bedouin comes to Rasulullah Hadith is reported by Anas The Bedouin comes to Rasulullah and what does he ask? Mata taqumu Ya Rasulullah, when will the day of judgment take place? When will the day of judgment take place? This is the question. Now I ask, I ask the youngsters sitting here to make this a little interactive, otherwise some of us might go to sleep. If we, or if the Sahabi radiallahu anhu knew the answer of when is the day of judgment? A thousand years from now, hundred thousand years from now, they knew it wasn't in their time. The Sahaba knew the day of judgment will not take place in their time. Would that benefit them? It is going to happen. It is not going to happen in their time. And he asked the question, when will the day of judgment take place? Is that question relevant? Is that question of any importance? It's important for our generation so we are aware of when is the day of judgment coming. Yeah, it would be important for our generation, but this is a Sahabi, this is the time of Rasulullah. So for him, would it be relevant? Not really. Rasulullah would always pay attention to those things which were relevant, which were important. When is the day of judgment? You don't need to know. First of all, Rasulullah did not know. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And the Sahabi did not need to know when is the day of judgment. What did Rasulullah do? He posed another question to the Sahabi. He answered with a question. The Sahabi asked, When is the Day of Judgment? Rasulullah replies, Ma a'adatta laha. When have you prepared for it? What have you prepared for the Day of Judgment? That is the actual question. That is the question we should be asking ourselves as well. What have we prepared for the Day of Judgment? Who are we looking up to, to guide us, to help us for that day in which we will have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every single person from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the last person that will reside on the surface of this earth, we will have to stand in front of Allah. Ma a'adatta laha. What have you prepared for it? And the Sahabi, the Bedouin, he wasn't like us. If Rasulullah asked me, what have you prepared for it? Oh ya Rasulullah, I pray this much salah. I pray this much tahajjud salah ya Rasulullah. I fasted this much ya Rasulullah. I give this much in charity ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, my heart is pure ya Rasulullah. I do so many good things. You know, some of us, especially in our culture, when, when this conversation conversation takes place, when a situation occurs where a person gives da'wah to another person or he just tells them to get closer to the house of Allah or he tells them to stop doing a certain deed which he shouldn't be doing, 
she moved into it, and the mother mom, Iman and mom, he just replies, just keeps going that, you know, you know, what do you know, what do you know about me? I performed this many hajj and this many umrah, our teacher used to give the example, that we spoil our deeds by telling others. One time a person came to meet someone who just came back from umrah or hajj. And usually what's the habit, even in our uh, houses, when, when we come back from Umrah or Hajj and somebody attends or somebody comes over, we give them Zamzam and we give them dates. So this brother comes to the house of this host who just came back from Umrah or Hajj. And while this guest is sitting there, the host tells his son, Sonny, go get the dates from my 23rd Hajj so we can give this guest of ours. It spoiled 23 Hajj, 23 Umrah got, got down the drain. Rasulullah <laughs> asked the Sahabi, Ma adatala. Sahabi replies, Not like us. Not like me. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Ma adatala min kathir salatin wa nasiyah. Ya Rasulullah sallam, truth be told, I do not perform much salah. I do not have much fasting to present to Allah. But one thing I do have. وَلَكِنِّي أُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ He replies, Ya Rasulullah, one thing I do have, I love Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does the Bedouin say? I do not have much deeds to show Allah on the Day of Judgment. But I truly love Allah and His Rasul sallallahu I look up to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa When Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانُ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا In the Messenger of Allah, there is the best of examples. We don't have to look anywhere else. He says, Ya Rasulullah, I love you and I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallam then replies, very well, anta ma'man ahbabta. You will be with that or those whom you love on the day of judgment as well. Those whom we look up to, we will stand with them on the day of judgment. Anta ma'man ahbabta. Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us understand how important it is for each and every single one of us to have correct company, to look up to those individuals whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has considered the righteous, the pious ones. I'll just look at two points I'll just end off with. Firstly, look at Surah Fatiha. We recite Surah Fatiha more than 20 times a day. Allah give us all the ability to understand the Quran. We should at least read the translation of this Surah Fatiha and these small surahs if we don't know the Arabic language. Every salah, every rakah we ask Allah, oh Allah guide us to the right path. Allah didn't end Surah Fatiha there. Even though the sentence is complete, guide us to the straight path. I mean, Allah explains. Allah teaches us how to ask of Him. What is the right path? Siratul Ladina and Amta Alihim. The path of those individuals whom you have been pleased with, O oh Allah. Four categories. If we look up to these four categories, we are successful. If not, we have to make a change in our life, brothers and sisters. Whoever obeys Allah and His Rasul, the translation of the fifth, the verse in the fifth juz of the Quran. Whoever obeys Allah and His Rasul, فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ They are with those individuals who Allah has been pleased with. من النبيين, the prophets. والصدقين, the truthful ones. والشهداء, شهداء, the martyrs, the ones who gave their lives for the sake of Allah. 
والصالحين, the righteous ones. وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا How great is their company? How great is their friendship? If we are following, we are looking up to these four individuals. One of the great tabi'een used to say, أُحِبُّ الصَّالِحِينَ وَلَسْتُ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ يَرْزُقُنِي صَلَاحًا I love the pious ones, but I am not from among them. I hope one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes me from them. We should think like that as well. I have not reached that stage, but I want to be like them. Insha'Allah on the Day of Judgment, we will stand with them. Secondly, my dear respected brothers, these verses and these ahadith, many a times we think that these are for the kuffar, these are for the disbelievers. That is incorrect. In Surah Hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those individuals who thought themselves to be believers and who lived with believers. They will be separated from the believers. I'm just giving the crux of the verses in the Quran because time is ending. They will be separated from the believers and they will call to the believers. They will call on to the believers. They will tell the believers, were we not with you? Were we not amongst you? Didn't we chill with you, hang out with you? Were we together in this world? The believers will say yes. In this world we were together. But what happened with you, our dear friends, is you fooled yourselves. You fooled yourselves. You had long hopes and desires. And shaitan misguided you. So today, The believers will tell them, Today, we are sorry, there is no way out for you. Today, we are sorry, there is no way out for you. In this world, we were together. But today, it has become apparent that who is who in the zoo. <laughs> that on that day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the transgressors to separate themselves from the believers. On that day, white will be made white. On that day, it will be made clear who is who was on the right path and who was following those who were misguided. Who was on the path which led to the wrong destination, Jahannam. My dear respected brothers and sisters, let us keep these verses in mind. Let us keep this hadith of Rasulullah in mind. Let us adopt the company of those individuals who will guide us to the right path. Let us not waste our time chilling, hanging out, being on social media, looking up at those who are who misguide us, who are waste, who will waste our time in this world and who will be a means for our loss and our destruction in the life hereafter. And I end off with the verse which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions after these verses. Because frankly, today many speeches are given. Many talks are heard. Many scholars speak. Many words are being uttered. But very less action is taking place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't care about this. Speech, speaking, it doesn't mean anything if there's no action behind it. I gave a lecture for the last past half an hour. If I don't act upon what I am saying, then this will be against me. If you don't act upon what you hear, then this will be against us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then brings a verse after these verses. And this verse was a life-changing verse for Fudayl ibn Iyad rahimahullah, a very great scholar. He was a highway robber, he was a thief. When he heard this verse of the Quran, 
When he heard this verse of the Quran, then this was his life-changing experience. A brief history about Fudayl ibn Iyad. Let us take this home. Youngsters as well, let us take this home. And it is never too late for us. Fudayl ibn Iyad was the mafia of his time. He was the leader of his gang of his time. He lived around Iraq, that area. And people would not walk the streets at night time because they knew Fudayl and his gang is out there and they will rob us. They didn't only rob, but they would kill as well. They take whatever you had and take your life as well. It was a very dangerous gangster. And he was also in love with a certain girl, with a certain person as well. So the first deed that he did, being a 